hello everyone welcome and welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here thank you so much for stopping by my name is Juliet please consider subscribing so in today's video we are going to be making an illusion princess dart bustier here I have my fabric folded into two using the bust measurement which is also the biggest measurement I'm working with divided by four plus extra five inches of allowance and then I have the shoulder to the half length that I'm working with plus extra one inch so here i'm marking the shoulder measurement i'm working with divided by two which is 16 so 16 divided by two that is eight i'm marking eight inches and then i went on to mark armhole of nine inches and i'm connecting that into a straight line next on this folded side i am marking three inches in and then half inch down from the armhole line and i'm going to connect that into a slant as you can see then I am marking the shoulder to the bust point and then the shoulder to the under bust point like so I'm going to mark that all across and then using my ruler I will connect the lines together So next I'm marking the neckline which is 4 inches for the width and then I marked 4 inches as well for the depth. So the front neck is 4 by 4. So connecting these lines I'm going to curve the neckline as you will see. So next on this um, bust point line I'm marking the bust band measurement divided by 2 plus half inch. So I'm working with 8 inches divided by 2, that is 4, plus another half inch, making it 4.5. So I mark that all the way down and then I connect it. So on this under bust line, I'm marking 1.5 inches out from that bust line, from that bust palm line. And then I mark the same 1.5 down to the end and then I am making a curve to the bust point like so. Down here, I am marking half inch inwards from that bust span line, and I'm going to connect that line as well to the bust point. Next up, I went ahead to curve my armhole using my armhole curve. And then on that armhole line now, I am going to come down by two and a half inches. And then I will connect to the bust point. So after connecting, I went on to add mark one inch on both sides of that line, and I connected all both lines to the bust point, like so. Now for the second line, I am going to extend that line by two inches from that armhole line, and then I will curve a new armhole from there. Let's see how. So that is it for the front. Now we're going to mark the yoke. Remember it's an illusion, so we're going to mark the yoke part. That part is going to be replaced with uh, a lace. So I marked 6 inches from the shoulder for the yoke. And then I'm going to connect that into a straight line. First of all, then I'm going to come down again. From this midpoint now is a sweetheart neck, so I'm going to come down by two inches from there and then I will curve out like so. Unless I'm going to curve to the armhole. So I'm going to curve down to the armhole now like so. And next we're going to cut, starting from the shoulder slant, I'm cutting out. Next I'm cutting the neckline. And then the dart. So we're not cutting out this yoke part yet. We're 
we're going to cut out the princess that's first of all and then trim off the yoke later you will see in a minute Please give this video a like if you're still watching. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So after cutting out the princess dart, we are going to place this now on our main fabric and cut out exactly as it is. And this is what we have here. So these are the side pieces and then this is the main, the center piece. So this is how this is going to be. Now we can go ahead and cut out the yoke. So the lines are still there, we are just going to follow them and then trim out the other part next we're going to trim off the one on the side pieces as well this will give you an idea what it's going to look like after we're done sewing it so I'm going to place this now on a lining piece and cut it out the way it is. So for the back piece now, we're having the we're using the same um, fabric on fold, using the bust measurement divided by four plus extra five inches. So for the back now, I'm marking one and a half inch for zip allowance, all the way down, and then I'm connecting that into a straight line. And then from the shoulder, I marked 11 inches, which is one inch above the bust point. And then on this down part, I went in by half inch and then I slanted to that 11 inches point. So from that zip line, I'm marking the shoulder measurement divided by two, which is eight inches, 16 divided by two, that's eight. And then I'm marking the armhole of nine inches and then I'm connecting with my ruler. I will go ahead and curve the armhole as you can see. The next I'm marking three inches from that zip line and then half inch down from the armhole line and then I'm connecting to form the shoulder slope. Then for the back neckline I'm marking two inches for the depth and then four inches for the width, the same as the front. So four by two for the back neckline. Then down here I am marking four and a half for which is the bust part measurement divided by two plus another half inch for the dart. I just marked it from that zip line and then I made a notch. Then on the shoulder I just marked six inches down to get a yoke for the back. So the back yoke should start from the armhole line. From that nine inches you just take it out straight. But I will not be doing that here. I want it a bit higher. So this is what we are using. Also, I'm going to adjust that yoke later on as you will see. To make it look better. So now I'm cutting out the armhole, the neckline. I'm opening the back piece into two. And then I'll cut out the slanted portion like so. So I'm going to place this now and cut it uh, cut out on the main fabric. So this is what we have now. After cutting that out, it's now time to remove the yoke, which I adjusted. So I, I extended the yoke to about nine inches, which is where it should be. You should have uh, you can just use nine inches all the way, but I made it in form of a V at the back, like so. So you can just slant from this zip side to the armhole side and just cut that out or do exactly what I'm doing here. 
So now I'm going to cut out. So next I'm going to place this part now on a lining piece and cut out the same thing. So here are my lining pieces for the front and the back. Next I'm placing the lining on the right side of the back piece. We're going to go close the upper part which is the neckline and then the zip side. We're going to do that on both pieces like so. And then for the front pieces we're going to join the lining pieces together. Also, I've gone ahead to part the front pieces. I will link a video down below on how to part this. I didn't want this video to be too long. So, I'm going to sew this like so. Starting from the down part. All the way up. I'll do the same thing for the second side pieces like so. And then for the main fabric now, we're going to place the lace on top of the lining on top of the inner fabric the satin like so we're going to treat these two as one so we we'll align them together like this for both the sides and the, the side pieces and then the main the center piece So next we're going to place them right sides together and then we're going to go join them together now using half inch all the way up. So at the edge here I'm going to leave out about half inch. I'm going to make a tiny notch there and then leave out that half inch because we're going to finish that part up with the lining later on. So we're going to do the same thing for all the satin pieces, the inner pieces. The upper part just going to mark half inch down and then make it tiny notch but we only on the satin piece we are not notching the lace so this is the back piece I've joined I turned to the right side and I have ironed and this is what we have so next it's time to mark the dart here I'm marking the zip allowance which is one inch so now that we've turned it with the lining, we have only one inch left. And then the dart is going to start from 11 inches, which is one inch above the bust point. My bust point is 12 inches, so one inch above that, that is 11. Then the dart is four and a half inches, which is the bust point measurement divided by two plus half inch. So already we made a notch. I just connected that line to the notch and then I marked half inch on both sides so i'm doing the same thing for this other back piece now one inch for zip allowance and then 11 inches from the shoulder so my plate my tape is starting from the half length and then i just located 11 inches upwards and i made my mark then from the zip line that allowance is starting from the zip line please i marked four and a half and then i connected to that notch that we made earlier and then half inch on both sides all the way up. Next now we're going to place the lace part of the back piece on top of it like so. Making sure it aligns. Remember now that we have sewn the zip allowance. We're going to have some excess about half inch hanging from the lace. So notice how there's space on the side of the lace piece now. I'm going to pin that in place first. So we're going to go sew the dart together, like the two pieces together. We're going to treat them as one moving forward. So from here now, I'm going to go hold this point and then sew the dart using that half inch all the way out. using my pins now to hold it in place so it works as one we're going to repeat the same thing for the second back piece i'm going to use my pins to hold the 
two pieces together. Then next we're going to fold over the dark like so. I'll use my pins to hold it together. While you're folding, you just make sure that your lace did not slip out and that you're holding both the lace and the satin piece together. So I'm going to go sew the darts for the back pieces and then here is the front piece after joining together and ironing. This is what we have and this is the half inch I left hanging as you can see for turning with the lining. So next we are going to place the right side of the lining piece to the right side of the satin. So just push the lace piece away a little bit and then I'm pinning like so all across to the other side. So I'm going to sew across the, the initial seam. Everything here is just with, between the satin and the lining pieces we are not touching the lace at all so we're going to go join that finish the neckline iron it and then we'll be back so this is the back piece this is the dart sewn in place and this is what the wrong side is looking like and also the upper part of the lace the part that is only the lace i still marked one and a half inches for the zip allowance then here is the front piece and this is what it looks like after turning it with the lining this is what we have this is what it's looking like so next we're going to mark our measurements i'm marking on the back piece and all the measurements are going to start from the zip line so from that zip line i will mark quarter of the bust measurement and then down here, I will mark quarter of the waist measurement. That's the half length round measurement. Then I'm turning to this side. I'm going to do the same thing. Quarter of the bust measurement and then quarter of the half length round measurement. That's both divided by four. And then half length round divided by four so next i open up and then i check from one line to the other line to be sure that i have half of the half length round on this down part and then half of the bust measurements on this upper part so if all is correct then we go on and pin the front piece on top of the back pieces the back piece right sides together so i'm going to pin them together now and then i will take them to the sewing machine and then i will sew the sides i'll sew on those lines and then i will also join the shoulder pieces join the shoulders together after that this is what i have i've also ironed the next we're going to finish the neckline you can use a ready made bias which is going to work better but i didn't have any bias here so i'm using a piece of the satin fabric all around the neckline so i've sewn from the right side i've sewn the piece i'm going to turn it now to the wrong side and then fold over it making sure the raw edges of both the neckline and the satin are hidden something like this and then I'll take it back to the machine and sew all the way around the neckline. After that, this is what we have and we have come to the end of the video. This is how to make an illusion um, princess that bustier. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.